<sighs> and we are live. Live at five. Oh, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Just give me a quick view of Culver City. Not as good as the boat side yesterday, but it's a pretty good view still. So uh, let me go. There we go. Send this side. So I'm not squinting into the sun so much. I can actually see you. There we go. Hi. Thank you for joining me. And more people are going to be joining, I believe, because I've been promoting and sharing this one. Um, please feel free to share and invite your friends through Twitter, sharing your followers, putting it out on Facebook, stuff like that. I appreciate that. Um, we're getting some deep stuff here. So if you're not really interested in relationships or you're not willing to go deep, you may not want to watch this scope because it might stir some things up for you. Thank you for being here. By the way, if you are first time in here, please put your name in. Great. Also, when you're here, um, you can double tap the screen. And you can tap the screen frequently up to 500 times to give hearts to my scope, which I appreciate. Um, see a lot of new faces here. I should say a lot of new names here. So, hey Lisa, glad you joined me. There's some recognizable name, at least one person there. Thank you for the hearts. I'm about to get started, so I just want to make sure more people are joining who said they're going to be here because they want to talk. Hey, um, I've been doing a lot of love scopes for the last four weeks now. Wow, it's day 28, four weeks. So, um, I don't know what that is, but I don't think that counts. So, see ya. Um, uh, there might be a few trolls around this afternoon. I noticed a few of them today. Maybe it's a Friday thing, I'm not sure. What I'm going to do is tell you three keys. I should say three traps, in a way, that are stopping you from getting the love you want. Because I want you to have better luck in your love life, attracting what you really want, and ideally having relationships that inspire you and you love. So thanks for joining me. And again, please feel free to share this with your followers. If share on Twitter, on Facebook, and invite your followers. That'd be great. And please send hearts, which I love. Thank you, Lisa, for the hearts. I know that's your color today, which is awesome. Um, I am, my name is Barry Selby, by the way, I should tell you who I am before I start telling you what you need to do. <laughs> my name is Barry Selby, I am known to my friends as the Love Doctor, that's kind of my affectionate name, but my work I really am the Heartbreak Repair Specialist, working with single women who are successful and frankly have been doubting they can find a man that can help them and keep them on track so they actually stay successful and also so they can love fully without hurting their hearts again and again. I am number one best-selling author. Number one best-selling author, that's the phrase I want to say. Uh, my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, is on Amazon as a physical book, like this. Also on Kindle, um, on Amazon, you can find it right there. And again, just look for 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, or my name, and you'll find it right there. It's, it's changed people's lives, and I'm really proud of it. And kind of surprised, because I never planned on being an author. And I've got a book, which I never plan on doing. So, just the point of view that, you know, being an author was never part of my plan but Spirit had a better plan. So, let's get to this topic. I think that's all who's joining the boat as we leave the docks. Um, put this down. There we go. So, three keys or three reasons why you're not getting the love you want. Let me start, put it this way. Most of the stuff that I teach is not stuff we were raised with. I know from speaking personal experience, my parents didn't teach me half the things I talk about. And in fact, most of the principles in my book and in my work didn't come from them. I love my parents, especially my mom who passed away three years ago, my dad who's still around but is still grieving that because they had an amazing relationship. But it's not a relationship I would teach because their style is not my style and maybe not your style either. So let's get into this. I'm doing this thing called the evolution of love because I believe that relationships are about to go to another level of quality, of context and of um, experience. And this is one of the things I'm going to help you with which is very basic but very pivotal. Three keys. First one, and I said this in the scope I think a couple of days ago, is you don't know what you really want. Now that's going to sound like that's silly. I know what I want. Well, based upon your results you've had in the past, and this is true of every area of life, but I'm speaking specifically through the channel and the conversation of relationships, have you gotten what you wanted? Or did your partner have habits, choices, patterns, addictions, ways of being that didn't work for you? The answer is probably going to be yes, they did. And the answer then mean, also means you didn't get what you wanted because you got something you didn't want. So I'll say it again. You probably didn't know what you really wanted. Because not looking where you're going, not being clear what you want, you're going to get what shows up and maybe things you didn't want. So it's vital, as one of the keys I'm giving you right now, is to know what you really want. So the question then comes how do you do that? How do you find out? Well, what you do basically is you get clear by making a list of what you want as a starting point, as a journaling exercise. You know what you really want? Well, you go down the street and you see somebody go, oh, they're cute. 
you don't know what their personality is like, what their history is like, or what their way of being is like. So it's not about what they look like. And so when you make a list of what you really want, you've got to be willing to go deep. So yes, you can start with, oh, they look this way, or they have this style about them, or the way they do things is this. But you need to get down to the fundamentals. And how I recommend in my work with my clients is you start with writing down what didn't work in your past relationships, what they didn't bring to you, what you didn't get what you wanted. Because that's going to start you getting clear about what doesn't work. And then that gives you the steps to get clear about what you do want, which is the opposite of that. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Let me, let me say another way. If you haven't got what you want till now, which you probably haven't if you're single and you're wondering about what's going on here, about how to get what you really want, it's likely, hey yourself, it's likely that you don't have clarity yet. There's two other points we're going to get to in a minute, and they're bigger ones, but this is a starting point. Knowing where you're going, it's like driving a car. If you want to go to New York, it's good to have a map, if you don't live in New York, that is. So how do you get there? You have a direction. That's what a work I do with my clients, is to get them clarified, so they have a GPS, basically. A guidance system to get from here to where they want to go. And that's what part of the work is. And part of that work is start with a clarity of what you're looking for, in all components. And you can write down as a list, or you can do as a picture in any other format, but get clear what the person's like, how you are together, how you are in relationship. That's a piece people miss a lot of times. And those three things as starting points will give you an expanded list that will probably take you a dozen places further forward about what you want than you first had. Because again, you've probably been dating on romantic pilot. Not a smart move if you want something that's really going to work. Now, some of you may have been lucky in love in the past. And I mean lucky because it's not usually conscious intention that does it when you're unconscious about relationships. So, as I said, I'm going to get deep on here. So that's the first one, which is basically getting clear about what you want so you can see where you're going. I mean, it sounds obvious, but there's so much to it. I actually have an eight-week program based upon that one piece alone because it's got powerful steps in it that don't happen just like that. So that's the first one. And the second piece I'm going to get to drop into. So it's nice to know what you're looking for. The challenge with that is that a lot of times you're coming from a history that doesn't match that. And I'm getting to point two, so I just want to follow through with where I'm going on this. And it's not fun stuff, so I'm sort of smiling and happily and sharing stuff. That'll be on the pair of tips what I'm doing next, because I talk about tips using Periscope, which are more fun. This one's a bit grunchy, and for Friday it's not the ideal one, but the truth is, if you want real love, it may have been painful. You may have had your heart broken more than once. You may have felt sad about it. Thank you for the hearts, I appreciate that. But I want to get you clear. First of all, about where you're going, which is the first one. Second piece is that what you're looking through is your history. Your past is overriding your vision. This is something people don't always get, but it's a fundamental part of my work. And in my coaching especially, that's where the heart healing is. Because many of us, and I went through it too, so it's not true just for my clients or for you necessarily, for me as well, is going through those heartbreak experiences that become stamps on your life choices. They become these weights that stop you getting where you want to go. So making peace with, and it's not just ignoring or burying or stuffing down your past, making peace with your history, your past, your upbringing especially, because that's where a lot of the seeds and the clues are about your relationship choices. Fun stuff, isn't it? Not. <laughs> I'll speak for myself, my own upbringing, and I shared about this on a scope last week or week before, um, wasn't a bad upbringing, but it influenced my choices in my teens and 20s because I didn't know better. And most people, honestly, don't know better. They go through life repeating the patterns that have been, been stuck in them by their upbringing. Usually does, doesn't work. So, just saying. It is, yes. Um, and I appreciate you being here because I, I, I love having people who actually comment and respond. So thank you for that. I, I'll follow you back now because you're in the conversation. Um, but what if you do know better? Is that know with K-H-N-O-W as in knowing better or you don't know better? I think you mean if you do know better. Okay. Well, if you do know better, that's one of the three components. So yes, that's a good starting point. An action from that too, because the truth is that we may know what happened in the past, but until we go and do the inner work, yes, the inner work, it ain't a dating service, it's inner work, to actually make peace with it, it's going to keep running because it's subconscious programming that we took on. We are an amazing human beings, we all are. And part of that is the brain, the consciousness that we carry. 
but there's two parts of the consciousness that I talk about in my work. There's other parts too, because there's a lot more in the biology, but something that I learned a long time ago, in fact, I got to see Bruce Lipton recently, who does biology belief, and his work just totally gave me validation for my work, which is cool. Not that he told me that personally, but I just saw what he said. We have, what do you, how do you know when peace has been made? And let me get to that in a second, because I want to just get to these these co these pieces. In our minds, we have consciousness. That's what keeps us aware and awakened, like, oh, wow, there's a world out here. That's our consciousness. But there's two parts to it. There's the conscious mind, which is the, well, let's move this way. If you've seen a picture of, or ever been on, on a cruise up in, in Alaska, you know what an earthquake, an, an earthquake, I'm in California, I've got that on the brain. I've, I've wrapped down in South America. An iceberg is, getting back on t context, an iceberg being a big block of ice is floating in water and a little bit sticks out, a lot of it doesn't. That's the way consciousness is. Consciousness basically is your conscious mind is a little bit sticking above the water, which you see and looks around, has the vision and ideas and all the willfulness. And then below that is the big part of the iceberg, 90 plus percent, 93 percent, something like that. That's your subconscious mind, it's all the automatic programming that runs automatically on autopilot. Auto, auto, auto. You get where I'm going with this. We pick up patterns learnings, rules, beliefs, structures, all the way through, especially for the first five, ten years of our life, purely in subconscious, because the conscious mind isn't active yet. It's not locked in, which comes around the age of 9, 10, 11, give or take. So during your younger years, all that programming got put in, because at the young point, you don't know what you're doing. Most of us as three-year-olds, four-year-olds, go to our parents go, tell me what to do, because we don't know. We may play out some things, but they teach us so much about life. And most of the time, I, I appreciate that. We should talk then, definitely. Thank you, Gail. The, the thing about it is, is that our parents don't teach us by what they say. This is the key. They teach us by how they act. Let me digest that one for a second. Our learning is absolutely... Hey, Michelle, welcome here. Um, our learning is basically imprinted by what we saw them do versus what they told us. Now, they may have told us, you should do this, 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 and this. But then we see them act a different way, and we go, that must be how it's done. Because as a three or four-year-old, we're very impressionable. And we believe what we see is the truth. Because that's what we think growing up. That's what we're born with, that skill set. So, thanks for the hearts. I appreciate them. And again, please invite your followers and your friends and share, you know, all that stuff. Um, so, what to do? So, get back to your question about making peace with your past. Or how do you know if you made peace with your past? If you're still attracting relationships that remind you of your history, that's a good clue that you haven't yet. And that's, unfortunately, the best um, litmus test to know. Thank you, Gail, appreciate that. So let me just recap quickly first, step one, step two, and I'll go further in step two and then three, or key three. Awesome, thank you. Key number one is you've got to be really clear about where you're going, what you're looking for, what you're intending, otherwise you're going to be an autopilot and then just be all over the map, and that doesn't help you. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. I love that. And thanks for the hearts. This is becoming juicy. And I appreciate the fact you're staying on board because some people are going to go, no, this is too much. I don't want to know. And they back away. So I appreciate your fact that you're involved and you're watching and you're learning, hopefully, some keys. So again, key number one is you've got to know where you're going because most of the time you're walking along oblivious, or I should say with a list of three things. We should have a list of 2,500 things. Yes, it's that big a deal. Someone made a comment on Facebook recently about relationship being a, um, well, not, now I know you're here, so thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, there was a post on Facebook recently, this thing about, this is the thing about Periscope, keeping single focus is really hard at times. <laughs> there was a post on Facebook about making relationship, um, the context was a conversation about how relationship is often treated like a casual throwaway versus maybe the most important decision of your life. That was what it was. It was a friend, it was a, fr a friend of mine was at somebody's wedding, about how it's the most important decision of their life and they valued it. That's the thing about relationships. We don't always invest time, energy, money, study in learning about relationships. And we wonder why our life, dating life sucks. And I got some clues. So, number one is to know where you're going. And I have this thing about making a list of what didn't work before to give you the springboard to make a list of what you want to have in the future, okay? Second key, which is, which is where I'm in right now, is the one about your past. It is the guidance system for your life that overrides where you're going. This is the thing. 
If you say, okay, I've got a list of where I want to go, I'm really clear about it, which is said I've got an eight-week program just on that piece alone, all online. If your past isn't um, in alignment with that, it'll pull you because again, like the iceberg, is the biggest part of the iceberg is the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is, is the intentional part, so that's your vision of the future. It's conscious mind, maybe five, six percent. Ninety-five percent is your subconscious mind, which is tied to the past. Which do you think has more power? Hmm? <laughs> kind of obvious. So you may have a vision of what you want, I've done a vision board and other things too, but until your history is made peace with, yeah, well I, I can feel for you because it's something that we do. I did it three times in a row, so I know from painful experience how it doesn't work. That's why I've done all this work and I studied and I teach this because I'm really committed to this journey and helping my clients, friends, and particularly the women I work with to get what they want because they're the ones that didn't get supported. So, so again, your history must be uh, resolved, and not stuffed, not, not, not buried, not destroyed. Well, Lisa, let's talk, because I will help you get clarity and have you heal so you can get what you want easily. Well, with more joy, let's put it that way. It's not, not, it's not two steps, it's a bit more than that. So, and Lisa, you can reach me, you know, you know talk to me. Um, so, the history, you're welcome, your history is powerful place because it stores all the data points you've learned and you think that's the way life is because some things that happen that are not accurate but we we file them away based on that I talked about it in my book and I talked about it in one of my uh, interviews my parents relationship was wonderful but they did certain things that I believed were the way it should be and that wasn't accurate because I interpreted it differently than they did it so again it's not what they say it's what they do so I give you enough on that one I think so let's go to number three because it's one of the subtler ones that many people forget indeed that's true Yes, actions speak louder than words. Wonder Woman, that's nice, I like that, it's kind of cool. Um, it's number three. You may have gotten a clue where I'm going with this because I did talk about your future vision and your past history. There's one tense left, that's the present tense. And this is the key that I think is more important than any for most of my clients. And this is why I do the work I do and why I'm being now called to speak to women's conferences about this because this is a pivot point for life and for women in general. I went through a journey, um, it started back in uh, 2007, so eight, eight years ago now, that changed my life and put me on this course. And it was discovering about the polarity of masculine and feminine energies, which some people talk about. I had, I had my own flavor of it because of the spiritual components in my own history of study for the last 30 years. I've been in this for a long time. But the masculine and feminine was the capstone of my learning and understanding that for women, you've been trained you've been taught and you've been required to put on the mindset of the male to be in business and be an entrepreneur especially but so if you're working business and executive in corporate whatever you're doing to compete in the business world especially as an entrepreneur it's hard to do it in the feminine according to the way it was taught and it's not true but it's the way you were taught and for most women they compete with men I mean I dated women like that it was really not fun it was fun initially for maybe three months but it failed after that because there was no polarity. We were doing this in the relationship rather than doing this. And that's a piece of the learning. So part of the work I teach my clients, and this is an interesting place because I'm a guy teaching women this, but what I'm teaching them is not to do what I do. So I give them the opposite part, which is helping women remember their feminine gifts. And I've said this before on, um, when did I say it? It was a while ago I talked about this, but I'll, I'll say it, drop a piece of it in here. The feminine energy, the power of you women and your feminine, is so far outweighing the power of the masculine. And it's a good thing. Because of that, I believe, our last thousand, two thousand years of history, because men are shit scared of women in their power, honestly, they've done their best to suppress that. So women have been told and impressed and repeatedly said to them, this is why I need to speak at women's conferences, it's coming up juicier every time I say this, have been told that they're second class. I'm glad I did that for you, I'm glad I could help, because it's not about saying you know, women's liberation, and this is the other thing. Women have been through two major revolutions over the last century, actually more than that now. The suffragette movement, where they got the right to vote, and then the feminist movement, which is, the sec which is really the sex revolution in the 60s. I wasn't planning to go here, but we're going here. We're into the third one now, because this, the first one was giving women equal rights to a degree, in voting, and the second one, Second Revolution, wasn't actually the feminist movement. It was the macho movement for women. I'll say that again. 
it was the macho movement for women because it taught men sorry it taught women how to compete with men had them burn their bras cut their hair take out their makeup yes it was white women though anyway but that was the work that was the women who wanted to get out of work because at that time that was the women who were fighting through that barrier but the way they were shown it was to get in the men's world and compete with the men on men's terms as men would be except they were in skirts well actually pantsuits back then it was a it was a and say it was needed but it ain't done yet that's why I believe the third piece is coming and there's a lot of that happening now but I don't believe there's another level yet um, for those of you who know about the goddess movement that's out there with all these goddess teachings and trainings which I highly respect and appreciate the friends some friends of mine especially on the West Coast maybe it's a West Coast thing are very big in the arena of teaching women to be goddess which I love and I support that except I have a caveat can it work all this all can it work all these barriers past her society and identity let me say it this way it has to for the sake of our planet the sake of where we're going and this is this is getting to me my mission now so I'm just letting you know where I'm going this is where I'm leading in my work our planet needs the feminine more than ever our planet has been um, run by the masculine energy. well it wasn't even the masculine it's the macho male energy not the masculine it's a different thing and I'll talk about that in one of my scopes two weeks ago what, what's been done to the planet hasn't been healthy anybody who's got their eyes open knows this and where we're going is not, the, not going to be helping anybody what is needed and I, I said this before and I say it again the Dalai Lama was quoted as saying and it was 2006 I think it was he was at a peace conference in Canada and he just given two awards to these women's organizations yes and that's mostly led by the feminine with men who know they have a heart which I do the Dalai Lama said at the his um, speech when he was doing this and it's a famous quote it's been on Facebook a lot the meme is out there is the world will be saved by the Western woman which sounds all good and great except I believe he needed to say one more word to really make it land and it's what I believe he meant but he didn't say it I believe with my own addendum is that the, what the Dalai Lama meant to say or was intending in his words is the world will be saved by the Western feminine woman and this is my work. So I've been called by high power, in what do you want to call that, to do this work because I've watched women own up to that and grow, and that's great. I mentioned earlier that there's a next, next, next step for this. The goddess movement is wonderful, but some of the women learning to do goddess work are stopping at the, oh, is it nice to be walking and running around the beach with the silks on and being feminine and soft? That's incomplete. My vision, my belief, and my request of the women who are owning their goddess, their feminine, their feminine heart, which is the flow and the grace and the life and energy of movement and everything else, is the goddess movement has one more piece, which is the warrior. And what I mean in the sense of this, and this is going to inspire some people, it's going to scare the shit out of some people, just so you know. The feminist evolution is women own their feminine energy, their heart, their magnificence, because the feminine energy, as I mentioned, is way more than the masculine energy is, which is good. Because what we do as men is we're directional, we get things done, and I can go into a whole other conversation about the masculine if you want after this piece. Let me finish this one. Uh, women warriors who own their feminine. That's the challenge, there are only a few. I would say Oprah is close to being one. She's in a feminine a lot of the time because of her heart, she's so driven. But she does a lot of masculine stuff too. But thankfully she has a man like Stedman in her life who holds a strong masculine presence so she can let go of it and soften that's part of the dance of relationship when it's done right okay I'm getting on a rant let me back it up a bit um, Jada Pinkett to a degree she also frankly when she's on her own she's very much about getting things done in her masculine but when she's with Will because they have a fairly healthy masculine feminine polarity she can step down with that do you think they are really together I don't know I mean I'm not I'm not a paparazzi I'm not a reporter I, I can only read what you read too, so I don't have insight to that. They're not my clients. <laughs> and if they were, it'd be private. <laughs> yeah, Oprah, she's someone I think is, is in the feminine more than anybody else. It's interesting because someone, uh, Jeb Bush, in the, I only heard bits of it because I didn't watch the debate last night, night before. Jeb Bush says something about um, he would like to have Margaret, Margaret Thatcher on the $10 bill, which cracked me up. So I'm thinking, you want to put a foreigner on the US currency? Um, Margaret Thatcher was the exemplification example it's pretty short of way of saying it of a male energy in a feminine body or a woman's body she was no you know she was she was she did the hatchet job she was an amazing woman but she had to do exactly what I meant 
about stepping in to compete with the men by being in the same energetic as men. And that's not your gift. Your gift as women is to own your feminine power, which is a collaborative, cooperative, and harmonious energy that will change the planet. So I, th I think I lost track of point three. I was on there somewhere. <laughs> oh yes, let me, let me give you some keys for fix number three. Because I mentioned at the beginning, um, future, work to do, past work to do, present. As women, because mostly women are watching this, I'll tell the men the same thing too in a minute. If you really want to become more um, passionate about attracting a relationship, then you would love to do steps that own your feminine, femininity. One, because when you're in your feminine, you'll be more attracted to men. But two, when you're in your feminine, you want to attract the right, you'll attract the right sort of man. Because a man who's in his masculine, and this is the polarity piece that I work with, Yes, actually Michelle Obama is a good choice. African American, strong leader, but a real feminine heart because she's so soft and gentle. Um, good choice. Good point. Thank you for that. I was, I was, I was running my head through with going new, so you're doing it for me. So thank you for that. There are a few women out there, particularly celebrity types, that are definitely feminine, and there are those who are just being pretend, pretenders. And that's not going to go into who that is. You can decide for yourself. Um, feminine practices. Yes. <laughs> Damn, this is fun to keep dancing on the conversation. We went there, and now we're going to go back to where I was. Okay. <laughs> Practices you can do for yourself. Let's put it this way. Cut to the chase. As a woman, you can do things that help you remember your feminine heart. Oh, yeah, that was going to say. It attracts the right sort of man. That's okay. No, this is a conversation, so feel free. And let me just see who you are so I can... Who was that? Oh, Lisa. <laughs> I didn't catch you. I was the back and forth. So... Not a problem, Lisa, you're fine. This is part of the stretching into being on Periscope is the double conversation. Um, when you're in your feminine, as a woman, not as a guy, but as a woman, yes, you. <laughs> There's a, um, a shift in your energy, let's put it this way. When you're in a feminine and you discover the power of that, the guys out there who used to date will probably be scared shitless to be close to you or run away. When you're in your feminine, you will also have a better clearer sight of what you're looking for. So your attraction radar will find men who own their masculine hearts. And that's a different energy. Because the difference between macho and masculine, to, put, to be simple about it, like the bad boy versus the good guy, the bad boy was the guy who basically was driven by his cojones. And that was what he was focused on himself only. It's led into the narcissistic tendency that's been out there for a long time with guys. Oh, you want to say that again? Let me rewind. <laughs> that men are evolving too and not as smoothly as women are to be clear about that I've been doing a lot of this for my own work there's a difference between macho and masculine and these are um, energetics not gender because the macho and masculine energy can also be in women particularly in gay relationships but in women in general too but in the, ma in the male body macho is basically driven by balls cojones to be really blunt it's my way, the highway, and if you look back at the old archetypes, like watching um, All in the Family, Archie Bunker and Edith Bunker, that was the archetype. He was like, it's my way, the highway, woman, you know, my way, get out of the house type thing, because back in the old days, back in like 50, 60, 70 years ago, which is the old days, the men were the breadwinners. So they had the right, and they took the ability to control everything, which is why the whole thing of the revolution had to happen. So women were the meek ones, in quotes. That's the way it was in the old model. Okay, thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. Um, and let's talk as well. I mean, we'll, we'll connect and I'll find you on Facebook or something. And thanks for watching and thanks for sharing it too. Um, this, is, this is going way beyond what I planned, but it's okay. And I'll be doing a pair of tips. You can catch that tomorrow when you wake up. <laughs> thanks, Gail. Your um, evolution into the feminine gives you an insight into who you are. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the second piece. So I was doing Macho Man versus I Will. Yeah, I, did, I think I did already. Yes, I did. You can follow me too. Well, you already do. <laughs> All these social media things we have to do. Okay. And I'll watch you on the replay. Catch it there. So, back to men. Mas macho versus masculine. The macho is what I mentioned. It's basically driven by cajon. It's my way, the highway, in it for himself, and you come second. The masculine man is a heart-based man who has a strong spine and direction because what the masculine man is about is delivering something of purpose to the world. The masculine man 
is focused on legacy. He's focused on having a result. He's, fo he's focused on something beyond himself. And a masculine man is absolutely the man that will be attracted to woman who's in a feminine. Woman in a feminine, frankly, will scare the boots off of a guy who's into macho energy. When he's in masculine energy, she'll find an equal. And she will trust him because her innate gift will be the sense when he's really aligned or not. When he's not, she'll smack him up. Seriously. It can get that clear. So that's why I love working women in the feminine because it wakes the men up. See, I've got a master plan going round in circles here where I wake the women up, they wake the rest of the men up because it's not my job. I know that. So, as in practice you can do in the present moment, because that's what I was getting back to number three key of the three keys, is doing things for yourself that reward and fill you with your natural tendency, your natural bias. So if you're feminine versus masculine, things you can do is bubble baths, soft music, dancing in your own space, freeform, um, yoga. By the way, a little sidebar. You know that sitting meditation actually is a masculine practice, not a feminine practice, because the masculine energy is stillness. The feminine energy is movement, because of the yin yang, the opposites, attraction from the opposites. So when you are in your um, feminine, your best meditation is some sort of movement exercise. Seriously. So I'm just file that one over for future reference. If you have things that you do that nurture that in your daily practices, so you dance every day, or you do yoga every day, or you do bubble baths every day or two, it restores your feminine fuel, or it simply refuels your feminine energy, let's put it that way. And it brings you present. And for many women, and for men too, we've been so focused on out there, either future or the past, we forget what's here. So the third key, just to drop it really clearly, is you've got to really love who you are now. That simple. And something you can do, and I recommend this on a few scopes, I was on a couple of, um, I'm part of a Perry 10K group, and we do these uh, share every day, and I've been to two so far, and I'm going to show one of them how a practice you can do for yourself to really build your own support and self-esteem is you can do your own um, self-love practice in the mirror, to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. To do that for five minutes in the morning and the evening, it will change your life. Now, if you have body issues and your privacy, do it, to, do it to the body parts in the mirror you see when you're naked. That's a whole other exercise for self-esteem and stuff support too. But if you start with looking in the mirror and telling yourself you love you, I love you type thing, looking in your eyes and taking time to connect here first, not just say it to say it, but just to connect here first, you'll feel a shift of energy through the mirror back into yourself. That will heal you. And you may be surprised how much emotion comes up doing that simple exercise. Some of the stuff is profound, but it's so simple and elegant, it'll change your life. So you do that five minutes a day, or stretch to 10 minutes a day, and do it morning and evening. After a week and see what happens. See how you feel about yourself. You'll see a shift. So that's my three keys. Um, if you're on from the beginning, great. And if you missed something, go back, back and watch the replay. Any questions, thoughts you want to say right now before I shift gears, because I'm going to do another scope in a minute, and I want to just wrap this one up before I jump off to jump back on again. And thank you for the hearts, by the way, I love that. I'm glad, hopefully, you got value from this and some learning that will help you have a better dance with relationship. I will say this, by the way. Thank you, um, my pleasure. I do have an online program, which is the Future Vision. It's called The Dating Advantage. It's on my website. Um, that's an eight-week program. I've taken my, I've got a new program that's coming together, which is nine months, which is the whole thing I've just talked about in a nine-month online program. It's really an extension of my coaching. I have three-month coaching packages for those people who are really committed to heal themselves and they want the support from me directly. Because frankly, that heart healing is much better when it's with someone supporting you versus doing it through written programs. That's the way it works better. So if you want to find out more, you can go to my website, which is barryselby.com. I was just saying it, you write on, write on the money. That was great. If you go to barryselby.com, my name, B-A-R-R-Y-S-E-L-B-Y.com. There's a whole bunch of stuff on there. There's a video course. Actually, my, just so you know, on the front page, I talk about the three great three keys to get the love you want. That's the same thing I'm teaching now, but in three videos. So you can watch it there. Exactly. Thank you, Lisa. Click on the Let's Talk button at the top above my, above my uh, logo. That's where you can just click on that and do a consult, which is a free discovery session with me, and we can talk about how, where you are, what you want, if I can help you, and if we want to work together, or what I can recommend. That's it. Yeah, everything I can. <laughs> That's all of that. 
my books on the website and a few other things are on there too. So I've got online programs, a lot of free audios and videos from past interviews, although frankly my scopes are much more current because it's evolving. So there. Um, two other things. One is that you can follow me live both here by going to periscope.tv forward slash Barry Selby to catch my scopes. You can all watch my archives. I've got about 30 of them up there now on catch.me. If you don't know about that, that's a free service provided by somebody competing with Periscope, or should say someone supporting Periscope. So catch with a K, K A T C H dot M E forward slash my name, Barry Selby. And that's where all my scopes are stored. Well, my first eight I did a month ago disappeared because I didn't know about catch. Now I do. Um, I am part of a 30 day challenge. We're on day 28 today. So this is the 28th day of a 30 day challenge. So this has been a rock, rock and roll ride for me. And I'm also part of the Perry 10K group. Um, watch my scopes. Watch my earlier scope today. So it's part of a um, share a about um, self esteem and co self confidence that was really fun. Um, there were four of us in a row, normally it's five, and it was really rich. Although the folks in England were a bit tired because it was 11 o'clock their time. Um, that's it, I think. Yeah, that's all the information. So find out more about my site, follow me here, follow me on Twitter. I'm not as big on Twitter, but actually, I'm bigger on Twitter now because of this, because I love Periscope. If you want help, reach out to me. And hopefully this video will change your life in a way that's good. And I'll be back on Periscope in about three minutes, five minutes maybe, to do my Peri tips for the day. Got a couple of keys for you to make your Periscope experience more fun. All right? Thank you again. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for sharing it with your friends. Share the replay, please. And you can parts of the replay as well. And hopefully you'll have a, well, not hopefully, get out and have more fun in life and love yourself first. Thank you for watching. Be back on oh tomorrow's gonna be a whole different day i'm gonna be out and about tomorrow so my scopes may be random just so you know they're ahead of time and uh that's it have a great friday afternoon evening saturday morning if it's there now and take care of yourselves bye <laughs>